For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm giving you guys a bit of a, a review on a brand new product from Camper Dometic. So this here is the Camper Dometic Studland Classic. So in the Studland Classic range, you've kind of got now two sizes of the 2020 season going forward. You've got uh, the 6 and the 8. They're based on essentially the 8 berth. The 6 is just kind of a little shorter rendition of it. They are both the same width. So they are both a 460 width. So it's really just a depth that is really changing. Also, a new thing for 2020 is the ability to add on an additional annex onto the one side, really kind of creating the Bergen of 2019, but in polycotton. And yet again, as you would expect, they do this in a polyester model if you don't want it in polycotton. Generally, differences between polycotton and polyester is polycotton is a lot more breathable. So on a warmer day, certainly in the UK, let alone when you go to mainland Europe, um, the fabric actually breathes. So the basically material can actually expand, the weave can expand, allow air to pass through it and be a lot cooler on the inside. On the flip side of that, on the sort of a colder day, the, the weave contracts and keeps the warm in. So it reacts to temperature quite nicely and it's, it's definitely a more comfort comfortable environment to be in um, on a mildly warm day in the UK. If you're going across the mainland Europe, then really you should only be looking polycotton just because the, the temperature difference they have over there, uh, really a polycotton is what you want to be going for. Also in terms of a lifespan, the durability of a polycotton model will last longer than a polyester, maybe even two to three times longer. So it's a small investment, but more for a polycotton version of polyester. But essentially, you do reap the benefit of that in terms of its lifespan. The other thing to bear in mind as well is essentially that um, it is maybe a slightly bit more high maintenance. So you need to make sure, as always, with tents, they packed away bone dry. Reason being is that because it's polycotton, it's got a cotton element to it, so it's more likely to absorb some of the moisture. It takes a little bit longer to dry, so really you want somewhere to pitch this tent back at home, um, or somewhere to spread it out at least, to make sure it dries its bone before you pack it away for the season. With polycotton, you've probably got a slightly more smaller window, which you can leave it sort of wet in a bag. We understand with the UK weather that, you know, <laughs> it's, the weather's so predictable that it, you could suddenly have a chuck down of rain the moment you're setting away. The thing is, when you get home straight away, get it up, get it aired, Get it dry, pack it away, and then it's good to go. You then you preserve the life in it of the model, and it will last you that much extra longer by taking an extra bit of care in it, really. Because really, you know, mold and mildew is the killer of fabrics. Generally, the joys of it kind of takes over from the 2019 version of Studland, but with, like I said, one major feature added on, which is the annex. The annex actually is quite nice because it's uh, a, an optional extra. It's not something that you have to buy initially with the tent. It's something you can add on to it. So there is a now for 2020 season additional zip located on the outside, around the outside of this side door here. Unfortunately, if you've got a 2019 model, the annex won't fit for your 2020. But the other thing to bear in mind is if you have got a 2019 or an 18 for that matter, the optional extras that you can get for the front of this with a front zip attachment, something like the front canopy or the mesh vestibule will still fit. So you don't have to worry about rushing around trying to find last year's model. You can rest assured in the website but, uh, link below for our page, you can still purchase those more than happily. Same with this, because you've got the option of the two extras, you can look at it on at a later date. Um, and it just gives you that extra little bit more level. Personally, I think I see the introduction of the six size, I think will be really well received because um, there's around about sort of 150 pounds difference between the six and the eight and the only thing you're really benefiting is an extra 30 centimeters in the canopy area an extra 20 centimeters living area and the additional bedroom for the front part so i think for the price difference and the ability that i would probably in my opinion add a canopy on put that money towards a canopy to get that extra space anyway um but i know people will still want to go as big as possible and that half a meter in the whole whole length does make a difference um, and it's certainly we've had them in, our, in the showroom here side by side and it does quite you can see the difference um, but going forward to you know 2020 our showroom probably won't have we'll have the six on display maybe not the eight but we've done the eight for years and years and years and years the annex you can see zips on and on off as we want to there's a, a steel pole quite happily there as well and you've got a nice embed sleeve just to sort of feed it through something you can add on like I said, as when you want to, but you can always check out our own at walls pitching and packing videos on those and how quick and easy it is to put up the whole model. I put this uh, studdling up on my own in the best part of sort of 12 minutes. 
uh, which something this sort of size makes it the perfect idea of going away for a week or weekend because you haven't got the faff of having to chuck everything up. Each beam is done individually and uses a campus Boston valve. You get a manual stirrup pump supplied with it as well. Um, something not too dissimilar to that, um, which basically just means that you can then do each way. And as you can see from our pitching methods, you start in the middle and sort of work your way out as well. You've got the easy pegging system. So there's a nice sort of storm straps bracing the front, also the back, but also on the sides here as well. So you've got a fixed base point. One single pegging point will actually help to torsion the base and then you can adjust the actual fabric that way. So make sure you're not over tightening. Generally that's about the perfect width because it creates a nice triangle formation with the front. Um, and yet again, other things not to miss out are things like the mesh uh, panels above the windows in the living and sort of the canopy area. But we'll go into a few more details about that as we have a look on the inside and see what else the uh, Stellan has to offer. So now we're inside the tent, you can kind of get a bit more of an idea for certainly the sort of free zones you've got in the tent itself. So you've got a nice big canopy area, a good sized living area, and obviously sleeping area at the back. So we'll work our way from the front towards the back of the tent itself. So as we saw on the outside there, there's a nice big open canopy, but you've got the ability to zip it up completely. So there's three panels on the front and three door positions. So you can have it sort of a third open, two thirds or fully closed, or alternatively roll it all the way back. And every single point there is obviously a nice PVC window like you can see here, but also uh, curtains which are zip up just to give you that extra level of privacy that you need. Into the section over here, on the side part, we've got a nice mesh panel and really to allow a bit of ventilation into the canopy section, as well as, uh, you know, just it has it all sealed up a good airflow throughout and that's the same in the main living area as well and but you've also got a nice big clear pvc window just to get your sort of shield against the elements as and when you require it throughout the whole tent you've got zip up curtains so below the every single window zip up curtains so you can bring it sort of halfway up or however long you want it to or to go fully up and get that real nice coverage against everything else so that's a really nice option but then so you've got halfway, alternatively all the way down. There's a little storage pocket located just down the bottom, so you can just roll it up, tuck it in that pocket, and there's a little just a retaining toggle just to make sure it sort of stays there, not falls out uh, if it gets a little bit windy. There's a ground sheet that comes supplied with the front area as well, so you can actually make it in a completely enclosed environment if you wanted to. Personally, see the point I think really you're going to use this as kind of your wet area. You can always have your door to sort of uh, the halfway point if you wanted to, um, and then that way you can seal it all up and it will have half ground sheet and half area. So, again, if you're cooking or it starts to rain, you've got no shelter in this front door, so it's just going to come straight in the ground and then go soak into the grass. Whereas you have a ground sheet, it's going to collect on there, and just then this is like I say, your kind of your wet area, if you will muddy shoes, uh, bikes, your cooking facilities. You know, anything you can spill, doesn't matter, it's going on the ground. Whereas you walk in here, it's your lovely cleaned area. So shoes off before going in. You've got a really nice flat lip. So no lip at all walking in between sections. So you haven't got a trip hazard for kids. That was a really nice little feature as well. You've got a mesh panel at the top that you can help with that circulation. Even though it's a polycotton tent and it is breathable, um, you still need to sort of nail down sort of a good circulation of, of air inside of here to sort of really help fight condensation. The divisional doors between the sort of awning area and then also the living area can be put back yet again into kind of three uh, sort of different positions really. So you you can, well two positions actually to be honest, so you can open it down like a little bit like this, alternatively this zip will sort of carry on to the top there and then you've got never again another zip running back all the way. Now, what does has changed a little bit for the season is that the zip now only finishes at this point here. So you will always have almost like the same kind of idea here, a small little triangular point, which you can't roll it back all the way. Main reason is because an extra bit of zip in there, and not I don't think many people used it sort of rolled all the way back. So just having like a little almost like frame to walk in and out of, I don't think it's gonna harm anything. Um, and yet again, that's oh, gonna be pegs, so I can't remove that. But you can't get the idea. And again, in the front section here, you've got your crystal clear windows with the curtains beneath it. I will in one moment actually grab the camera and bring you inside just trying to get a bit more feel of it. But we'll go through, I think, first and then we'll have a little look around. 
So in the living area, like I said, in the six, you it's about 20 centimeters shorter than it is in the eight. Um, and yet again, the bedroom, an optional bedroom can put in uh, in the six, whereas it comes with the eight as well. So you can pick and choose between models and check out our floor pans on our website to know the real sort of overall dimensions. I'm pretty sure the Sturdland eight is 805 in total length by 460. And then the six is 755 by 460 width. So like I said, same width, slightly longer depth. Moving on in here, you've got obviously a really nice cushion carpet that works a little update for the 2020 season. Uh, it's got that kind of little Dometic logo uh, imprinted in it, which is really quite nice. You then, in the sleeping area, you've got obviously the ability to sleep uh, six at the back here, and it's a comfortable six. You're talking a 140, 140, a nice big master, 160 in the middle, with a slightly deeper depth to take sort of those higher uh, air beds or camp beds if you wanted to. One thing as well, you've got two side doors either way. The one on the left-hand side to me, um, you've got the mesh panel built into it as well, but you've got a little rain-safe canopy pole, as you can see from previous years and our pitching videos. Uh, on the right-hand side, yet again, you've still got the same ideal, so the same sloping door, but that optional zip around the outside, like I said, gives you that op option of having the annex on or not, and kind of creating something that that's in there with the annex in place is kind of your throw away. You can use it as a portable toilet, as we've got it situated here. There's a, a little wardrobe pole you can put in there to cling it up and use it for drying things. Um, you know, you can get a ground sheet for that section. There's, there's lo loads of things you can use that for. Personally, I'd probably just chuck all the bags in there, zip it up, and then it gives you more usable room in the living area. You've got uh, cable entry points located sort of down the side uh, on each end to allow mains hook up inside the tent without having to leave the door open the whole time. You've also got the ability of um, sort of storage pockets built into the front to put things like your biscuits um, or your shuttercocks all in there. So just de declutters the main part of the tent and means it's quite handy. You've also got in the inner tent itself, little storage pockets in the side, again for keys and phones, just that way you can, you know, not have to scrabble around for a torch in the middle of the night. And you've got a much darker, sort of really nice dark night's out bedroom, which does, as you can see from in here, really does help to make it sort of, well, stay darker for longer so you hope to not wake up at the crack of dawn when the sun finally comes up also you've got low level ventilation beneath the window and behind it to again help with that circulation of air to help fight condensation moving on into uh, the sabid light system so this here is the flex light uh, from camper so it's a really nice idea it's something that allows you to have internal lighting without having to have a lantern uh, and it's quite seamless because it follows on velcro the beams and works really quite well uh, and you've got little Velcro points here to allow the cable to run quite happily down towards your cable entry points or onto the other beams because with the Flexi you can buy a starter and an add-on. So you can add up to three lights on it. So in theory you can have one at the back like we have here, one in the main living area, and then if you wanted to there's one on the canopy area so you can really light up the whole tent off one remote control, off one so socket, pardon me. Um, so yeah, that works really quite well. But Let's grab the camera and talk through a few more features and have a look at that annex as well. So you've got to get a bit more idea. I will take actually round first before we'll have a look at the annex on the outside. Um, so you've got the windows there, but it's quite smart. And like I said, you've just got a secondary zip and there's a slight overlap as well, just to make sure you can actually, the water can properly shred as it needs to. The thing with zips are never waterproof, so you're relying on that baffle um, quite happily, but there's no difference to the front door. Same kind of premise. There's a nice vent at the front there. No entrance. It's just literally a solid door. It's a solid, sorry, panel when you've got the poles that clip on quite happily. So, moving into sections. As you can see, we've got the little cooking unit set up quite nicely there. Personally, if that was me, I'd probably put it on the other side. That way you can roll, because the door only rolls back to the left-hand side. It'd be make use of this little space down here with the window. As we pan around into you can see we've got a nice table set up here, got the breakfast on the table um, and some food from last week. Uh, <laughs> and you've got the little doors on the side with a little brow canopy just situated there. So it means you've got a mesh door in place so you can have a ventilation. So if the weather suddenly turns, you've got shelter from that. The darker bedrooms, as you can see, really quite nice. We've got it kind of set up with the mats there. Um, and you've got zip dividers between the sections as well to make it sort of fully 
uh, you know, sealed in, and that's the extra light. So you could say you've got the option of having it on or off, depending. So you're going for a shorter weekend. In theory, you couldn't. You don't have to put it on every single time. You can just put it on as an afterthought. Alternatively, if it's me, I'd probably zip it on, and leave it on, and it always goes on as one. Um, and then in here, you've got that separate little clips located just in here, uh, and that will put a hanging pole for a you know a, for using like coat hangers and things like that on it as well. Um, and the same again in the bedroom section. Not you can see it's so dark. There is uh, a little clip for the pole, the wardrobe pole to go in either side. So you have one in the left hand side or the right hand side. And again, the lighting in the roof does really help to illuminate it. And with the remote control, you can dim it as well. So you don't have to have it blindingly blight, blindingly blight, blind, yeah, blinding yourself in the middle of the night for that matter. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a nice model. Obviously, something I think will be a real hit, and I think, like I said before, I think the 6 is going to be probably a strong, stronger uh, model than the 8, but we've got the both options there, as well as the polyester model, which also has that zip annex on. But do check out that uh, separate video, and we also check out our pitching video just to show you how simple it really is. But any more questions, do feel free to let us know, um, and ultimately pop into our showroom where we have this on display for you to see in the flesh. So... That is our video review on the Camper Dometic Studland Classic in the 8 and also in the 6.